Hey everybody fans, welcome to the Point of Difference Rugby League Podcast. I'm your host Dave and today I've got a massive grin on my face because I've got a Kiwi legend, he's won two premierships, it's the one and only Paul Fatuera. Kia ora brother, how are you going? Oh, kia ora Dave, absolutely good, I'm healthy, I'm well, but most importantly I'm so grateful to be on your show today Dave, so looking forward to our, our kōrero and I'll, I'll try and be as, as honest as possible, but I was obviously... I uh, can't share with you every single thing that happens behind uh, closed doors, but uh, nah, looking forward to it and great to, great to be here. Mate, it's so cool to have you, man. This is great, honestly. Um, how good is it that Rugby League is like kind of really booming at the moment in New Zealand and the Warriors just signed uh, James Fisher-Harris for four years? That's unreal. Unreal, massive. The Golden Boot winner is, is the only Kiwi to win Three premierships on the trot. He's a quality player. He's he still has years on his side. He's only twenty eight. Uh, I'm excited. It's, it's a great addition to the Warriors for next year. And and fingers crossed he doesn't get too many serious injuries uh, this year with the Panthers. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're old joint. Unreal, unreal. So, um, what have you been up to lately, man? What have you been doing post footy? What do you do with yourself? I oh, do doing. doing... Done a fair bit of bit of things, but firstly, I'd just like to say thank you so much, Dave, for having me on your show. I've seen the great work that you do, the caliber of players that you've had on your show. I haven't really been on Facebook as much, but I did my homework as yeah. as I like to do before I go into any sort of uh, podcast or or whatever that may be. And I just like to congratulate you, mate. You're passionate about what you do, and uh, keep it going. Oh man, that's amazing coming from you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So what I've been up to, I've got three kids. I have two teenagers. Uh, Tiana, she's 16. Gabrielle, she is 14. Uh, they are growing. They are getting yeah. more beautiful. So daddy's got to pull out the, the taiha soon and the boys are knocking. <laughs> <laughs> so as a father, yes, I am busy. I also have a three-year-old son, uh, Tamati. Uh, so yeah, family life is good. Uh, busy uh, and... Uh, what I'm doing for, for work, I am the director of Internal Strength. It's a positive mindset resilience program that we deliver our NZQA accredited program across New Zealand. And very grateful to have uh, the legendary Ruben Wiki and Shantane Happy as, as uh, two of our facilitators doing some great work uh, within our mahi wow. as well. And we've got a number of other ambassadors too, but I just thought I'd name my my great brothers, uh, former teammates, legends in the game of rugby league. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're just trying to do our best to uplift the mana of our rangatahi, our, our adults, and, and direct them back into employment and just trying to share the, the great message of your health is your wealth. You are important and it is your birthright to self-confidence. It's just about making the right choices and, and also learning from failures. So, yeah, no, we're doing good, Mahi, and uh, I'm just happy that it, that I've got awesome teammates to help me along uh, this uh well-being journey with internal strength as well mate that's that's amazing like we need people like you doing that especially people um who've been there and done it and like are good role models you know and you can yeah that's just incredible work that you're doing so keep it up man you're looking great by the way you're still a stud you know? <laughs> thank you Dave. i wouldn't say i'm a stud i'm 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 plugging away i, I do try my best to look after my my house i think and you've probably interviewed a lot of other players that may have mentioned when we retire, we sort of go off track and, and training and exercise. And also the camaraderie is, you can still find ways to to hone those skills. And yeah, my, my health is my wealth, as I mentioned before. And and I still enjoy training, although maybe a bit slower. And yeah. I still like to push myself. And I think as you get older, it's all about uh, listening to your body more and and finding other ways to, to to keep your your health at a high standard, and uh, yeah, I definitely pride myself in in, in being healthy. I think uh, mm -hmm. when you're delivering the work that we do, you you want to be living by those words that you're trying to preach to your students too. So, uh, exercise is my medication these days. Hundred percent, yeah, man. I do twelve hour shifts on my forklift, the font here. And so I run, I run a lot, and uh, that's the only way to, you know, offset a few beers on the weekend. You know? <laughs> I see that. I see you like you're running. I, I don't mind a bit of running too. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm nuts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, my wife, she's the good runner. You know. Okay. <laughs> do you do long distances or short? Yes. No, I'm a marathoner. That's what I like oh. to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done, um, I think I've done 14 marathons and six ultra marathons. And I've done, one of them was 100 kilometers. Well, that's crazy. That's just nuts. Yes. <laughs> nuts. Don't do it. It's not good for you. <laughs> uh, Louis, Louis Anderson, actually, uh, Warriors legend, he ran a half a marathon for the first time over the weekend in Wollongong. Wicked. To help us uh, to support one of his friends. So I thought I'd mention Louis too. He's, yeah, he's, he's feeling oh. sore at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I actually met him once. Um, 2007, uh, Knights versus the Warriors at Mount Smart. I got to meet the team after the game and one of the best nights of my life. It was cool. Yeah, I got oh. to meet Rubes and everyone. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. So let's wind back the clock. Paul Fatuera, where did you grow up and what was life like for you as a young fella? I grew up in a humble town of Waini Omata. Uh, my yes. parents, uh, they met at the age of 18 and 19 in, in the Petoni, uh Bar. <laughs> and then a few years later, I I, I I arrived. So I was born in 1981 and, and brought up in Wanyu or Mata. My dad played rugby league uh, in the domestic premiership competition back in the 80s. He, he represented the Randwick Kingfishers and he was a part of a prestigious team. They traveled up to play in the Lion Red Cup grand final five times uh, in a row during the 80s. And unfortunately, he came up short each time. Yeah. But in saying that, uh, I was brought up with rugby league and my parents moved to Wanyu or Mata. And just just in a community entrenched with history, obviously the premierships in in 1989 and 1992, Ken Laban's legendary, yeah, Omata and, and a mentor of mine today, the Lomax brothers, Tana Umanga. So very fortunate to have wow. Piri Wuku and David Faumu who live around the corner. So in the weekends, oh. we'll be throwing the ball around, and it was just a normal thing to do. Wow. <laughs> So good, so good. So um, so that was something you did basically from the get-go. It was just rugby league from day dot. And uh, I guess the camaraderie, is that what um, kept you going back every week? Like what was it about the game that you loved so much? You just, I th at, at that time, of the, well, my brother played rugby league. He was five years older than me. So I started from the, the battles in the backyard with my older brother, Vern, who always dominated me. Who 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 put the shots on me and I'll, I'll be that young kid who'll just get angry and and frustrated, but he'll let me score a try to to make me happy again, and then we'll play another 10, 20 minutes. But never never won, but I but I I believe that my competitiveness came from my brother, and yeah. and also being young enough to watch my dad play rugby league and and play touch rugby alongside my father who was competitive as well, and for a prop, he had a lot of skill. So just having a father who was active with his children and also my brother who I looked up to uh, yeah. growing up, as younger brothers do, uh, that uh, that put me in, in good stead. And one was only a small community and uh, definitely had uh, great role models and and, and was, was given the opportunity to try different sports, boxing, uh, touch rugby, softball. So I, I, for, my, for me as a young kid, sport took up a lot of my time. And a yeah. lot of, and learned a lot of great lessons uh, with sport, not only rugby league but other sports as well. And and uh, certainly small town, everybody knows each other's business. So when you're up to no good, uh, your your parents would find out. <laughs> and then the tire heart comes out. And then the tire heart came out. Oh, <laughs> uh, how good! So who did you play for, like on your journey to playing for Wainui Amata? So I my first. Uh, team that I played for was the Wani Omata under nines. I was seven years old. Howie Tamati was my first coach, actually. Oh, stop His it. son, Hemi, same age as me, uh, was playing in the same team. So my parents reckoned that the first year I played rugby league, I, I not once did I get dirty. Uh, I was more <laughs> so in the, the back, pulling up my socks and just trying to keep clean. <laughs> that was my first introduction to, to rugby league. Uh, but as I progressed uh, through and and start to get more confident uh, with my skills. Uh, things started to to happen, but not fast. I, I was the kid who uh, physically matured late. Yeah, uh, I, I I was smaller from the rest right up to fifteen, and then I had a growth spurt from fifteen to sixteen. I pretty much the height that I am now, and uh, uh, my 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 skills. 
my my physicality started to catch up with my skills and I was a late bloomer. I didn't make any representative teams for New Zealand until I was 17 and then things started to happen quite quickly from there. Yeah, so you were playing prems for Wainui or Martha at that point when you were 17? I my first my first uh game for Wainui or Martha was against uh Fiti I was 16. I just okay. finished a week in hop up hop up representing Wellington and I played exactly one minute. <laughs> that was my first introduction to Premiership football. Uh, it was the last minute of the game. I wasn't supposed to play, but they just thought I'd give me a run for experience. And okay. and I remember the bus ride from from Carpetu back to Waini or Mata. We had under 16s in the front, under 18s, and had the Premiers at the back. <laughs> and I remember I just played that one minute of football. I sat at the back with the Premiers, thinking <laughs> I was the, the man. Big boys. With the big boys, obviously, I wasn't the man. It was only played one minute, but they looked out for me. Uh, Delaney Image, uh, Michael Price, uh, the juggler, the late juggler, good friend of mine. Uh, yeah, but that was my introduction of premiership. One minute. <laughs> what a great story. I love it. So, um, so who were some of the guns running around the cop back then? Like you mentioned the Lomax boys and Pity Weepu. And... Was there anyone else floating around? Yeah, we had a few. Uh, Billy Weepu, Pity's older brother, he just came back from his uh, stint at the Manly Sea Eagle. So oh, it was actually nice. a good time. And he, he uh, moved back home uh, the, the following year in 1999. And that was my first full introduction to to playing against grown men uh, through yes. the North season and having Billy there to to protect me and to to make sure that uh, we were, you know, back in those days, Far out, man. Uh, they are obviously headbutts. My my first proper premier game against Petoni, I, I received a headbutt. I won't name the person. He ended up being okay. a good friend of mine. Uh, so uh, yeah, things happened quite differently back in back in the nineties. Yeah, man. Yeah, she was pretty rough, eh? So you uh, obviously um, got used to it because all of a sudden you're off to Auckland, signed with the Warriors. Now, how on earth did that all come about? Because you're only seventeen years old, like. That must have been a, a real shock to the system. Yeah, it was, but I prepared myself for it. Uh, it, it started the year before I went to the, back then it was, it was the Hopopu under 18s tournament and I represented Wellington. And okay. I remember the, the New Zealand Rugby League team uh, was named and, and I wasn't good enough to make it and didn't expect to make it that year. But I remember sitting in, in that seat and Jason Wrigley, who's the football manager at the Panthers, actually made the Kiwis team at that time. And he was sitting next to me, and he made the Kiwis team, which was great, and he deserved it. And I and I said, mate, come next year. I want to be up there. <laughs> and from that day, I, I the next day, I just, every single day, I dedicated myself to 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 training, to, to listening to the right people, uh, not going out and partying. Uh, I, I had a clear focus and having a strong preseason leading up to the 1999 season uh, put me in good stead for when I just started to make those junior Kiwis and under 18s captain for for New Zealand teams. I was ready and I had put in the work. Uh, yeah. So things did come quickly. But uh, yeah, I, I take it down to having a strong preseason and uh, having good mentors uh, around me at that time. Yeah, man. So it sounds like you really had that goal, you were focused, like you wanted it. And and the other people who make it, you know, like if, like for me, if I'm running a marathon and I want a certain time, like it doesn't just come without training so hard, eating well, sleeping well, staying off the booze. You know? Like you've got to work hard. Yeah, it's no different in any sport. Particularly leg though, like it's just so physical. <laughs> wow. Like, like recovery must be huge, all of that stuff. Yeah, well, look at the players now. The look at Cameron Smith. He retired. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he 37? I oh, know it was unreal. unreal. Uh, Benji, another Benji, Benji Marshall. He retired uh, late 30s, and yeah, uh, the 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 scientific approach, the way that the players train and, and focus on their prehab in today's game of football is fantastic. And, yeah. and again, when I played, it was a long time ago. You used to just run that hill just for some head noise. There wasn't any uh, scientific approach or how it can be benefit you for the game. But now I, I do have a lot of respect for the professional, the professional NRI athlete of today. There's a lot more that comes into their job description 
And I just no. I love it how they've prolonged their careers. They're getting paid well. Because the NRL stands for not real long. It's not real long. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. It's great for them to be able to keep in the game longer. Yeah. Yeah, man. They beat their bodies up. They've bloody earned it. Um, so, yeah, so you signed with the Warriors. Uh, year 2000, you headed up there. So what was the whole, you know, you're walking into training. There's some, like, Mark Graves, the coach. Stacey Jones is there. Joe Vagana, Ali Lantini, Monty Beatham's coming through. Like, there's all these great players. And uh, little Paul Fatawira strolls on it. What, 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 what's the mindset uh, when you you turn up? And how did how did you get picked up by the Warriors? The mindset was wow. Uh, I I remember the first year I didn't even say boo. I was just in awe of the caliber of athletes that were that I was surrounded by. And the change rooms was uh, blood, sweat, and tears on the training field with Stacey Jones as a legend. I'm just like I can't believe I'm. I'm sitting next to him. I can't believe he passed me the ball. Uh, I was I was probably looking back now, coming from a, a small, beautiful, humble town of Wani Omata, straight into the big smoke. It happened really quickly, and I, I looking back at it now, uh, I wasn't ready, obviously. Okay. But uh, in saying that, I although I wasn't ready when I got those opportunities, I, I took it with with. Uh, with the lack of experiences that I had, uh, living away from home was was tough. Uh, being able to train at a high level every single day uh, was was a journey, and and I had to push myself. Obviously, never been to those but, levels before, uh, but it definitely put me in good stead for for years to come when I moved over to Australia. Yeah, yeah, I was just raw, 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 just a young boy in, in the big. And the big smoke of Auckland, and yeah. I thought, Auckland's massive. I just, yeah, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm. Although it was it was stressful times, I, I'm glad I got through it and 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 remained. Saw the year out, yeah. But my main goal before the Warriors, and I'm glad they came to the table. They were they were the only main club that wanted to sign me up on a full-time contract at that time uh, my dream was to always go to Australia okay. and I was able to fulfill that the following year you did you went to Melbourne eh? but uh, before we get to that so mm. you you made your NRL debut and it was kind of I've heard a story it was a bit of an accident or you weren't even aware you were going to make your debut so tell the people who don't know the story because it's great yeah I well there was there was yeah, well, where do I start? But I'll, I'll make it short and sweet as possible. Um, I had a good preseason and I played well in the trials leading up to round one and round two. And Mark Graham pulled me into his office and he said, Fats, uh, you've you've trained well in the, the preseason. You've played well in the trials. I'm going to fly you over with the team to Sydney for two weeks. It was uh, back-to-back matches in Sydney. He said to me, you're not going to play. I just want you to experience what it's like to travel uh, with the first grade team and I said oh cool sweet here I go awesome going to Australia to Sydney for the first time nice we, we stayed in a five-star hotel never stayed in a five-star hotel before all this beautiful pie extravagant food five-star material and I'm just at the buffet eating steak uh scotch butter steaks and pasta and you name it I'm eating it I'm just <laughs> everything's just like looking at me and I'm just tasting it and and I probably put about five kilos on over three days <laughs> Beautiful. And and then game day, three hours before the game, he gives me a tap on the shoulder and he said, Fetch your plane. Oh what? <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, that came as a complete shock. Luckily I was rooming with Monty Betham, who who, nice. who helped me um and uh yeah uh-huh. put against the West Tigers. Uh, uh jumped on the last three minutes, he put me in second row. I've never played second row before. Uh yeah. We, we lost in the last three minutes. Owen Craig, he put a left foot chip over and caught the ball and he ran 40 metres to score. We lost by one point. Oh, damn, damn. But still, what, what just how fast was it out there? Like, were you like blowing after three minutes? Yeah, I was actually. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't touch the ball once. I probably made about four or five tackles. I was marking, I think, Hopawati for the last oh, three minutes. Shit. So at that time, that was the year that he became even more famous. We don't have to get into yeah. it. <laughs> I didn't touch the ball and run it, but uh, yeah, it, it happened quickly. It went really fast, and yeah, uh, yeah what an experience! 
What an experience. Wow. Yeah, man, that's full on. So you actually played another four games uh, during that season. Um, what did you take away from your first season training with a first grade squad, getting some NRL experience, and then heading off to Melbourne? Um, yeah, how did all that come about as well? Yeah, I, uh, it was it was a a great experience. Uh, I think again that year I was I was, uh, I was obviously still young and, and and didn't know how to take uh, these opportunities. I didn't play too much minutes, and I was playing out of position either in on the wing or in the second row, which I never played okay. before. But uh, enjoyed the experience what it's like to be a professional athlete uh, every single day. I think uh, what I got out of it is that preseason was actually probably the toughest preseason I've had. We we trained hard. I don't know if that was my first preseason. The reason why it was my first preseason, but Trevor Clark was our head trainer in St. Panapa at that time. And oh, yes. we trained hard. I think uh, they probably put me in good stead uh, for, for when I moved on to Australia. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think... Still been it was twenty odd years ago, but still been friends with with uh, the players at that time who were yeah. around the same age bracket. Shantin Happy, who's a who's a who's a dear friend of mine, Clinton Torpy. Wow. Yeah, I think uh going through the trenches as a young bloke at those times was an all a learning experience and and you some and on your way you just try and work out ways to become a better player and, and to to appreciate it next time you get those opportunities. Yeah, man, yeah, I guess if you just, you know, always stay humble and working hard and you appreciate every minute of first grade, you know, you know, it's like it counts for something. And then I guess then the, the so how did the transfer to Melbourne come about? Like, was there an opportunity to stay at the Warriors or were you just like, oh, I'm out of here? Uh, yeah, uh, there was a small opportunity. Yeah, there was an opportunity, but I, I, uh, I actually received a scholarship from Melbourne Storm at the age of 16, Ken Laban. My mentor, okay. legendary commentator and a great man, uh, he organised a camp with Melbourne Storm when I was sixteen for Wellington. Uh, all the all the all the young players uh, coming up, so they ran a two day workshop. Chris Anderson was the coach at the time, and and uh, and I was fortunate enough to be one of two players out of fifty that got selected to go and train with Melbourne Storm in nineteen ninety nine wow. before they won the premiership. So okay. I went to Melbourne Storm to train for a week. Told on Nico, uh, Matt Roa, Richard Swain. Richard Swain, yeah. Oh, what a great team. So having that week training with the first graders before this is a year before the Warriors, I was I wanted to go to Melbourne. That was my team. Yes. That was my <laughs> team. And yep. although I did go to the Warriors when I went to them because they were they were the most eager to have me and and I was still in New Zealand. Deep down I, I wanted to go to Melbourne. And then the year later, I got that opportunity to to go to Melbourne, and to to really really learn the craft of being a professional athlete. Stephen Kearney was there at the time, and oh, he's a yes. complete, complete package of of what a professional athlete uh, does twenty four seven. So, yeah, great experience. Absolutely, man. So you actually said that your first preseason with the Warriors was your hardest because I was going to ask you just how hard was the training, you know, at Melbourne. But you would have had Chris Anderson back then, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, yes, Chris Anderson signed me. I think, yep. uh, uh, yeah, I th maybe uh, the Warriors training was really tough because it was my first introduction okay. to to professional uh, rugby league, and uh, uh, yeah, going to to Melbourne. I was one year wiser, <laughs> still, yeah. still raw, uh, but uh, with Melbourne, I think the the attitude was at that time and still is today. The reason why they are so successful consistently, the uh, the players will, will will put you in your put you in your place if you're not bringing it to the table. Uh, not just the the coaches. We I think at the time when I was there. It was just Mark Graham and the head head trainers that would put us in our place or tell us that well, we need to push ourselves harder where you're more accountable now for yourself, but also for your teammates and you don't want to let your teammates down. And and uh, I think the the corridor, the the standards was, was spoken about 
and you 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 had to to meet them or else you'll be put on the spot verbally Absolutely. yeah man i mean that's that must create such a a very one competitive but two like amazing team culture uh, where everybody is expected to pull their weight at all you'll get called out by your peers and you might not play you know so yeah it was uh, definitely a learning experience but i thrived on that and i think a play i oh, know for me leading my teammates down was something that i never ever wanted to do on the footy field uh, so I, I prided myself in and pushing myself and and making sure that I pulled my weight and and do whatever is necessary to to turn up the training ready. Uh, and I can say this now, I wasn't the, probably the most natural gifted athlete and, and had the X factor like like uh, most, but I guess what I was blessed with is, is the willingness to work hard and to listen and, and to do my best to get my job done. I think that, that kept me instead for my career. Mate, you're too humble. You're a bit of a superstar. <laughs> you're too humble. <laughs> but I guess humility goes a long way with certain people as well. Like, Because being grounded can be your biggest strength as well because you know what you've got and you know you've got to work hard for it And because those opportunities can disappear in a heartbeat. Like injuries, things like that, club might just drop you. You know, it's professional sport. <laughs> so no, I love it, man. Um, so you, you got to start, I think it was on the wing against the Sharks in round four your debut for Melbourne, um, and you jagged a try in a 34-24 victory <laughs> over the Sharks. Do you remember? Do you remember that at all? I remember that like if it was yesterday, Dave. Oh, right. <laughs> my about parents, it. Yeah, the great thing about Mar Melbourne, they were family oriented and they flew my mum and dad over to, to Melbourne to come and support me for that weekend. And, and it happened within the first five minutes, I, I believe. I uh, met okay. uh, Buffer. Uh, Matt Guy uh, made a break on the side and he just flicked me the ball. I had to put, catch it and put the ball down. And I remember I was so ecstatic, so excited that I'm jumping up like a little kid in the candy store. And Stephen Kearney was the first one to approach me. He said, no, come down, mate. <laughs> come down. you still got 76 minutes to go. <laughs> remember the ultimate professional, Kearney. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. And he still is too. And uh, yeah, we, we ended up winning uh, the game. And yeah was nice and uh yeah i do remember i yeah well, got quite involved during that game too i wanted to make an impression i knew that i might not i might not get another opportunity and so i really wanted to touch that ball and get involved a lot and uh yeah we, we got the w and my mum were there were there to to witness it which was a proud moment for us and i remember walking to my father who is quite staunch she doesn't really show his emotions as as much he had tears in his eyes and oh. you know, Definitely a good time for the the fatuera to find That's beautiful, man. That's what you want. Your parents there, they're seeing their son, you know, making it in the big time. That's pretty amazing, eh? That's pretty cool. That's what we live for in our kids and see them succeed. That's so cool, man. So, so you went on to play six games for the year, um, but then you moved on to the Penrith Panthers, leaving your dream team behind. What was the reason behind leaving Melbourne and, and how did you end up at Penrith? Chris Anderson left the, the team halfway through the 2001 season and then the new coach uh, Muppet Murray come in uh, for the remainder of the year and I remember finishing the season I, I played off the bench against Canberra and we lost but I remember having a conversation with uh, uh, the new coach and, and, and I guess telling me now you're here. You're you're currently in the twenty five squad of twenty five, but you may not be here next year. And I go, okay. okay. Uh, so what I did do, okay, what I thought, all right, what can I can what can I control? So I went back to the drawing board, and and uh, my season didn't finish. I went home to Wino and and continued my training throughout the okay. the off season. I didn't stop because I knew when it came the preseason, I had to turn up and I had to show this new the new coaching staff that I belonged here, and I had to come even more fitter and stronger, and I did that, and I, yeah. I made it a good impression not only on my teammates but also myself, uh, and got through the preseason. I uh, played, I thought I played okay in the trials, uh, made a positive impression, and then the squad of twenty five was named, and at that time was unfortunate but looking back at it now it was a complete blessing my name wasn't on there wow uh, so the only option i had 
was because uh, I was still contracted to Melbourne. Okay. My option was fly up to Brisbane and live in Brisbane and play for the Brisbane North Devils, the feeder club for the Melbourne Storm, or I give up my NRR dream and move back to move back to Wani Omata and play for the Wani Omata Lions. And I thought, man, I can't. I've come so far. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I took the first option, relocated up to Brisbane, found myself a, a small two-bedroom apartment, and uh, my my journey continued. And luckily, I lived next to Billy Slater and, and Cameron Smith. Wow. They were, we were all part-timers, so we had a contract with the Melbourne Storm, which was only a small contract, but it was just enough to live on. So we yep. trained through the day. And then we trained at night time with, with our team. And, and also, I didn't mention uh, Cooper Cronk as well. So it was myself, mm. Cooper Cronk, Billy Slater, and, and Cameron Smith. Throughout the day, we'll train together. And then we'll train with our team at, uh, at night time. Okay. And it was humbling, extremely humbling, because you're used to training the last two years with cameras and, and being noticed and training with the elites, coming back to park football, no cameras, no lights, no club wanted you no club wanted me that's crazy yeah that's crazy i still had the belief in myself because i had put on their preseason training i knew within myself that i had enough to to make it i just needed needed an opportunity and that opportunity came in round four uh in in the queensland cup there's only one tv game that's that's on the the tv and and luckily luckily it was ours and okay. uh Shane Richardson, the, the the current West Tigers CEO, he was the Panthers CEO at the time, and he was watching our game, and I had a decent game, was, okay. and uh, got the phone call that night. Good day, mate. <laughs> Shane hey, Richardson, mate. Uh, are you interested to come to the Panthers? And if you are, come to my hotel tomorrow. So, mate, wow, I rocked I'm up. There. Yeah, I rocked up to the hotel the next day. Uh, and uh, he had the contract already on the table. Uh, I didn't look at the money signs, Dave. All I saw was, all I witnessed was opportunity. Yeah. And I grabbed that pen and I signed it. And uh, that week I was down in Sydney at, at Penrith. Awesome. That's amazing. What a good like comeback story after. Like, What was your mindset after you didn't make that top 25? Like, Was that a real kick in the balls after working your ass off all off-season? Yeah, it, it 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 was. I was devastated. As young, any young athletes, uh, is feels when they pretty much said you're not good enough. Uh, actually, no, they didn't say that. Uh, to be fair, the twenty five squad that made it, they were quality players. It was just centers at that time were were ahead of me, and it's just rugby league. Uh, so I was devastated. Uh, but, but but because I worked so hard, I knew I put in the effort. I made the sacrifices. I was still twenty. Uh, it just made me as crazy as it may sound. It, although no other NRI club wanted me, it made me more hungrier and more determined uh, to succeed. Love that. I love that a lot. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. So um, you turn up to Penrith. So it's another case of walking into a team stacked with stars. You know, you've got Craig Gower, Ryan Girdler, Tony Pulatua, Scott Sattler, you know, like legends of the game. And they were probably a lot younger in their career then, to be fair, but they were still, you know, up there. You know, did you think this is this is the club? This is where I'm going to put some roots down and and really give it a fair crack? Yeah. Uh, all I was, yes, uh, I was hungry. I was determined. And I just this was my this was my my lifeline. Yeah. And uh I didn't leave no stone unturned. I used to play little mind games with myself too. And I knew when you're in Australia, you've got to be in front. If you're not in front, you're not getting noticed. This is yep. not guys do come last. And uh I, I needed to put myself in front when whenever it came to fitness or or sp- Whatever it may be, I had to get noticed because, like I said, I, I wasn't the most um, talented athlete, but I had to get there through hard work. And, and I was able to do that and uh, got my opportunity at the Panthers. And at that time, too, we were near the bottom of the table. Uh, it, was, it was a club hungry for success. Uh, we had the players around us, Tony Pulatua, Reese Weser, who was killing it, Craig oh, Gowler. 
uh, as you said, Ryan Gurley, who was the best centre in the game at that time. We had the the right team. We just needed yep. to learn to dig deep in the trenches together. And that 2002 season was all about learning learning about each other. Uh, and, and obviously, they changed the following year. Yeah, man, because you guys were in about, I think you debuted around round 15, and then you pretty much played out the rest of the year. Um, but it wasn't wasn't a great season. You guys finished sort of 12th or 14th or somewhere near the bottom of the ladder. So, one, what was it like, you know, playing in that first grade side and like having a decent run at first grade? And then how did you guys attack that preseason for 2003, which we'll get to, obviously, but because uh, you guys had an unreal season. So how did that all work for you? Like, like being in that first grade side regularly, and you must have learned so much. Yeah, it, it, uh, I took my chance. And and like I said before, I was just so ready. I was so ready. I, I worked yeah. so hard to, to be put myself in this position. I wasn't so hungry. And yeah. uh, although we didn't go too well, I was still happy. I'm playing first grade. I'm, yeah, I'm, here, I'm here. I've got, but the thing is, I need to stay here. And yeah. uh, how do I get better? How do I grow? What, what do I need to do to to remain here uh, for the following season? Uh, I was it was in in, in 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 a bit of relief too. You know, it was only a few months beforehand. I was living, I was playing park football, uh, yeah. so I took the opportunity with open hands, and I just gave it my all. That's awesome, man. That's so cool. Sweet. So, uh, what was it like going into the off season, coming off a massive victory against the Northern Eagles? Was there a, was there a lot of positivity in that off season, even though you didn't finish in the finals? There was a lot of optimism going into two thousand three. I know for myself, there was a lot of optimism. I knew that I had a club the following year, and it was just yeah. not a club. I think yeah. uh, I think yes, there, there there was. We had some great players, some young players coming up through the ranks who demonstrated that they were ready for first grade. Luke Lewis, uh, Luke Rooney, Shane Rodney. Yeah. Uh, so we we had a had a young, young, up and coming, Penrith talents uh, coming through. Yes. Uh, so the yeah we we sort of went under the radar for the two thousand and three season. We didn't really start to kick our straps until a little bit later during the season when we got we won eight or nine in a row. Uh, but I think uh, there's a bit feeling there, uh, but still there were question marks around the the Panthers. Yeah, yeah, I guess there was because you didn't finish anywhere near the finals. Um, it's kind of just like one of those seasons out of the box where everything clicks. And like like you said, you actually started the season quite slowly. I think you won about three of your first ten games or something like that, and then you just went on this hot run. I think you only lost three games for the rest of the season. This is unreal. As <laughs> you guys finished minor premier years, so you've gone from you know near the bottom, your minor premier years. You've had an amazing season. Uh, how does it feel heading into the finals? You know, with was there expectation on you guys? Yeah, we put our own expectations on ourselves, but in saying that, the, the community right behind us, they were just, wow, they made the semis, fantastic. They got the minor premiership. No one expected us to to be able to uh, to to reach the heights of of the of being number one in the regular season. And there was no pressure on us, even going through the, the semis. No one rated us. The Roosters were still... Uh, yeah, still ranked as favourites, and understandably so. They're a great team, which yes. helped us stay relaxed uh, throughout the 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 semis. And and very fortunate, we didn't have too many injuries. Obviously, okay. everyone may have had some niggles, but who doesn't have niggles? Oh, uh, so sure. we didn't have too many serious injuries. We were young, uh, we were hungry. There was a mixture of young talent, but also. Uh, uh, elder players like Ryan Girdler, Kristen Campbell. Oh, mate, he's a gun. Yeah. So we had a, a Martin Lang, we had a mixture yep. of, of uh, up and coming, but also uh, tough heads as well. And it blended in well. Yeah, man. And so you guys come up against the Broncos. It's your first ever finals match. 
what were your personal feelings heading into that? You must have been bricking it, you know, big finals match. <laughs> but what was the general feeling in the club? Were you guys quite relaxed or like confident you could get the job done? Yeah, when you play semi-final football, it's a different level. You've got to step it up. And yeah. uh, we're still question marks with, with, with the Panthers at our team. Uh, but I think more so, we were just excited to be able to play semi-finals football and at home. Yeah, uh, man. And the Panthers flew my parents over again, which was great to have mum and dad there uh, for, for, for the match. I think we were, we were, we were just... Uh, just ready, ready to rock and roll, and and a great thing about John Lang, he was, he, he was a, a people's person. He was a great okay. communicator, and he brought okay. out the best in Tony Pulitzer, Reese Weser. He he definitely demonstrated his confidence within our big guns. Yes, uh, and we we were able to also play our play our, our type of football. We had a big four pack. Pretty basic, run straight, play the ball as fast as you can, give the ball to Preston or Gowie or Girdler, they can work their magic yeah. and, yeah. and and uh find Reese and there's there's your there's your game plan. So it was pretty <laughs> basic. Play. Uh, oh, well. hard, tackle hard and we had a big four pack and we played to our strengths and uh we, we definitely had a lot of fun and we didn't forget that. Yeah. We made sure that we uh did our job, but you gotta have fun too. Yeah, we had a really nice, attractive brand of footy. Like you had a real nice blend of working hard, but throwing the ball around. But you had like those X Factor guys sort of stacked all through your back line, you know, including yourself. And it was just like a really nice brand of footy for the fans to watch. So it must be fun to play. Yeah, it was probably more so, I could be honest here, it was more fun for me to watch because... I didn't touch the ball too much because I didn't have to. We had Reese, we had Preston, we had Gerds. I just had to make sure that I, I made my tackles. So, yep. uh, yeah, now it was entertaining. And like I said, Luke Laws, he 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 hit first grade with a bang, as well as Luke yep. Rooney. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we 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 were definitely having fun, and we believed in each other. Yeah. And the rest of you got history. the job done. You got job the job done. done against the Broncos. That was unreal. But, uh, you know, one of the, the real surprise packets for me that came out of your season was Joe Nullifel. He was a Warriors fullback who sort of didn't really get much of a go and then popped up at Penrith as a prop. <laughs> it was unreal. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, he had, a, unfortunately, had a bad run with injuries at the Warriors at, at his time there and, and moved, got opportunity at Panthers. And, and I guess uh, his story is obviously uh, different, but going through adversity but also pushing through and and recreating yourself as a rugby league player and Joe Nullival was 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 that person he had to transform yeah. into a new position uh, not yeah. only he did that but he made a massive impact him, him and Tony Pulitura received the yeah. second yeah. row uh, players of the year they shared it he was devastating unstoppable uh, unreal uh, uh, he he was definitely one of the shining lights, and the reason why we were so successful in two thousand and three because him him, uh, Joey and, and T were unstoppable. They were. Our they season. called them the Care Bears or something, didn't they? Because of their big hair. Yeah. So That's good to watch. <laughs> so good. I love good it. men too. Good men, and and definitely looked after me as well. Uh, my time at the Panthers, so and I have a lot of time in in Aroha for those two. Oh, fair enough too, Ed. And so then you guys went into the semis against uh, my beloved Warriors back then. <laughs> and you guys got home by, um, it was a pretty close game, 28-20. And the Warriors had just come off a really tough match against the Raiders. I think they beat them 17-16. And all the Warriors fans were like, come on, Warriors, this is our year after losing the year before. But you guys were just too good on the day. Like You could always tell, as a watching it as a pro Warriors fan, you guys are just always a step ahead. Like, but how was it on your side of the fence playing the Warriors, your former club, in like the biggest match of your life? When you play every time you played against the Warriors, well, number one, you knew that everybody in New Zealand would be watching. So you yep. it's just human nature that you're gonna mentally be prepared and be ready for uh for the the to play against the, the Warriors. Yeah, I think uh that was a great game. That was a high quality yes. uh, game from from both ends, and it could have gone either way. It was just it was just meant to be our time, and 
you're, you're right. The considering the year that the Warriors had uh, the following year and 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 the journey that they were on through through the 2003 season, yeah, it was unfortunate they didn't make it. But as football, you you yeah. you compete at the highest level, and and uh, we were able to to finish on top. Although we had to push, and there was a it was a it was a bad all going either way. Yeah, uh, fortunately we we got the win, uh, and we did. And, uh, yeah, it's that's rugby league. You win some and you lose some, but yeah, it could but be the worst year this year. It could be, mate. You never know. You never know. And I, so the, the full time siren goes, you've broken every uh, Warriors fan's heart. And Paul Fanaware is going into a grand final, whereas 24 months ago, you're playing club footy. Like, wow. Like, what is that like a real, real realization for you that like you're going into this? grand final after working so hard like that had to be amazing give me goosebumps as you as you shared that uh dave bringing back uh, beautiful memories and uh, yeah definitely uh a a proud moment it's great getting to a grand final but let alone uh winning a grand final and and uh the the week went so fast but I, i remember john lang wanted to keep it just like obviously, obviously, it's not any other week. Grand final week's completely different. The lot yep. lights on you. The world is watching. The cameras are outside your house. It's a different kettle of fish, uh, Dave. Yeah. But John, well, who I have a lot of respect for, he he tried his best to keep it as simple as possible. And uh, I know most teams stay in the hotel for the whole week, and and uh, for players, and like myself, you're in a hotel the whole week. You can. It's yeah. uh get quite boring and uh it's not your same surroundings. We stayed in our at home uh, throughout the whole week. No, no, yes. on game game night. Sorry, the pre the the game before sorry, the night before the grand final, we stayed at home. Which okay. I think was a great idea. Yeah, just chill. Yeah. Chill. And having guys like Tony and, and Reese and and Joey who who before a game can have a laugh and, and to just yeah. the time just to keep it keep keep it relaxed i think that was a a great uh, uh preparation for for the game ahead i know the roosters stayed in the hotel for the whole week uh that week and and being the favorites yeah. they probably would have had a lot of pressure put on themselves yeah well, well there was a different week I, I, looking back at it it was yeah we we knew what we had to do yeah we start game plan and and uh, yeah, it worked out well. It certainly did. So, do you remember running out for the grand final, like the size of the crowd, the noise, the atmosphere? Like, what's that like for a young fella from Wainui Mata running out in a grand final? It's like pinch yourself moment. What's that like? It was unreal. Unreal. It was, uh, you're, you're, you're nervous, you're excited, you, you're the anticipation. Uh, I know uh, my my teammate next to me, two meters away, you, we're shouting at each other because you can't hear each other. The crowd oh. screaming, 80, 80 plus screaming fans. Uh, it's pouring with rain, which worked out to benefit us because we had some big boys uh, yeah. in our team. We just ran it straight all day. Uh, so, yeah, that no, was a great experience and, and so grateful to be able to, to make a grand final. Uh, and and uh, let alone win it. Uh, yeah, I w- wouldn't like the feeling of uh, losing a grand final. I'm thankfully throughout my career I didn't lose a grand final. No, you did. So Which, well. I know. I've still got good friends who played in the grand final in our time and have still, I guess, have regrets and about uh, not being able to to win one. So. Yeah, def- definitely uh, proud to be a part of the Panthers team that we were able to get the victory on that night. Yeah, man, that's so cool. It was an unbelievable final to watch. It's one of those gripping, tense thrillers. Like a low score, it can be just as exciting like in the big game when it comes to a grand final because it's like one flinch, things can go wrong horribly for the team on the receiving end. But uh, so you had like Luke Rooney score the double. He was a gun, by the way. Like he just came out of nowhere. He was unbelievable. And then one of the most underrated players, Luke Prittis, goes over for a try. 
But then there's the moment that's gone down in folklore. Scotty Settler, Tolly Byrne, Byrne's made the break. Where were you on the field? What were you thinking? <laughs> Scotty Settler's got no chance, and then Unreal tackles him into touch. Like, talk us through that moment. Yeah, it was it was it was definitely a moment in in the grand final where it, it uh, made a complete shift. Yes, so where I was, I was probably about 30, 30 meters behind, <laughs> uh, directly behind uh, Scotty Settler making the tackle on on uh, Toddy Toddy Burn. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I was just uh, gathering gathering. My my lungs were busting, but once Settler made the tackle, it was just a complete relief. I was like, I think you can see in the back background, I'm just going to. Woo! Give it a yes. Thank if because if you didn't make that tackle, mate, he's in for a try. So that was a complete yeah. shot the game. A uh, huge relief. Our our confidence uh grew from that tackle. And and that definitely was an important play that that uh kept us in the game, kept us in the lead. And yeah. uh yeah, it was a beautiful moment. A grand final moment that will be in the highlight rules for, for the yeah. remainder of, of uh, years to come. <laughs> it absolutely is. It's just one of those so like memorable moments. Um, yeah, I'll never forget that grand final. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, man. So um, you get to the full time siren. You've won a grand final. Like, how does that feel? All your teammates are in on each other. The Panthers have come from nowhere. Minor premiers, grand finalists. Does it get any better than that? Paul <laughs> <laughs> I was so young. I was twenty twenty one. I didn't know how to to take it, and uh, obviously relieved and and happy and and proud that my family were there to to enjoy this moment, but also putting uh, my hometown on the map. One Mata, remembering yeah the 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 hard work from the community all the battens up and all the fundraising they had to do for myself and many others to be able to experience and travel around the country to hone our schools of rugby league as a young uh, teenager coming up through the grades. Uh, so I think for me, it was just uh, not a proud moment for myself, but so many other people that, that helped uh, behind the scenes as, as well. And uh, it was uh, definitely... The week went fast. There wasn't too much yeah. sleep happening there. <laughs> I bet, man. Uh, I was it a good party, party afterwards? Oh, it was a long party. <laughs> yes. Well, I think my dad party harder than, than what I did. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, the Panthers club, it was a massive. They got a great setup in, in Penrith. The whole club was packed out. Yep. And and, and we definitely enjoyed ourselves. For, I bet you did. I've, I've actually months. been to the Panthers League's club over there. Um, it was when I came over for a Bathurst 1000 trip where we um we stayed in Orange and we got to go to the Panthers Club every night for a for a kai and and you know some entertainment. It was awesome, man. I was like looking around the club, we were like, wow, <laughs> this is so good. Yeah, yeah great go times, great yeah. times. Yeah. I actually really love that you um you thought about the club side of it, uh, where you came from, why know your matter, and because like club footy, it's all done for passion, and there's like no money in it, you know, like. It's all about people giving their time and their energy and love to the game and fundraising, and it doesn't happen, you know, without those people. You know, I think that's awesome. You pay homage to that. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's a grassroots, isn't it? Without without our uh, without our grassroots, without you doing what you do for free, yeah. there's a lot of a lot of people that are doing great work because they're passionate and because they have a lot of love for the game. It's a great game. It's a great game. <laughs> it's the best, honestly. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah, man. So, uh, two thousand four, another great, another great season. You make the playoffs again. Uh, you had a real epic uh, qualifying match against the Dragons, if you recall. Thirty-one thirty victory. Craig Gowis, lots of field goal. Unbelievable game. What's it like playing a game that close where it comes down to one point? <laughs> uh, when you win, it's a huge relief. Uh, uh, it's uh you know you go out there to compete to the best of your ability and uh i think being able to to get on top in those tight uh clinches and in, in a semi-final it's that's why you play the game you want to you want to yeah, play man. to the highest level against the the highest uh caliber of of athletes 
and you want to come out on you want to come out on top and and uh yeah it was uh, yeah it was, a, it was a great feeling absolutely and uh so you actually came up against the bulldogs in the semi-final so you've done really well gone back to back was it was it hard to get up after a premiership like uh mentally for the team like to replicate that form because you guys finished top four again um what was the mindset of the club coming through the season uh, you're right uh david it does become a bit more harder to to keep the hunger to to remain on top uh, because everybody's after you yeah the following year and they got your num they got their number on you uh, yeah. and we I'm not making no excuses at all but we had a we had a we had a bit of a injury toll that year I know Tony Pulator uh, come into to that game uh, not hundred percent he yeah. was struggling a little bit and uh, I was, yeah, looking back at it now, there there may have been a little bit of a two thousand and three hangover. Yeah, uh, and uh, we I think we try to do things the same, but you can't do things exactly the same. Yeah, I think the reason why I have so much respect and so much so much uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Generation. <laughs> yes, for the for the Panthers who have won three on the trot. Yeah, Ivan Cleary, uh, James Fisher Harris, the future Warrior player, which is cool. Just the, the players, how they've remained on top. Uh, there's been big changes in their side, but uh, but still been able to find a way. Yeah, I think that's I think special. Their juniors in recruitment is uh, second to none. Like they seem like this year they signed Brad Schneider. He's just come in and done a job while Cleary's been out. It's unbelievable. You know, they've always got the next junior coming through. It's just, they just find a way to replace these stars that leave. And they've got another one ready to go. Yeah, mm. it's unreal. Yeah, like you said, they find a way. They've got great systems. And and the, when the players step in, whoever it may be, they know they can do the job. And yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like as my wife's a Panthers fan, I'm not, but, um, but it's it's just so great for the game because like no one can beat the Panthers, and I love it in a way because it, we're watching history, we're watching a dynasty, and it doesn't happen often, like ever. So like it's it's amazing to watch just to see how long it will last. Yeah, crazy. That's crazy. It. It doesn't happen. Uh, the the quality of teams, the quality of games. Man, it's yeah. The, the Panthers have have definitely definitely done done well. I, I don't know if it can be replicated. We'll, we'll find out. Well, when Jerome moves on to your next club, <laughs> the Tigers. Oh, that'll be interesting, won't it? That will be interesting. But anyway, before we get to that, um, you came up against the Bulldogs in the semi-finals, and they unleashed a secret weapon called Sonny Bill Williams off the bench uh, in his debut season. And you guys unfortunately went down. Um, but what was it like coming up against Sonny Bill in his rookie year and seeing him yeah. go all the way through to the grand final and win? Wow, what a talent. What a special what talent. A talent. And he, he he made his first grade uh, debut with a bang. All eyes yeah. were on him. Not only was he an athlete, he was a good-looking Samoan uh, young man doing crazy things on the field, uh, making a huge uh, impact I actually yep. met Sonny Bill. We debuted together for the Kiwis. Oh. The uh, Anzac Test up in Newcastle. And and I met him in the lift. And I, Tony Pulator and myself were in the lift. And Tony Pulator, as you know, he's a big man. Sonny yes. walked in the lift and he towered over uh, Tony. And that was my first introduction to, to Sonny. Wow. But uh, he was unstoppable. He was just uh, raw, skillful. And... and uh, Definitely like Benji Marshall, uh, Sonny Bill Williams changed the game. He did. What about his shoulder charges that he had? Like, do you wish that was still in the game? Because did you ever, were you ever on the end of one of them? Well, I, I was actually. Fortunately, <laughs> he, he half clipped me. So luckily it didn't make the highlight reels. <laughs> but what I do remember, Dave, is because he only just half got me. So I sort of spun off it, but he got me. Yeah, I was in a bit of a daze for the next five minutes. Oh wow! Well. But I'm like happy. Young, I'm happy yeah. that it wasn't that big of a hit and it didn't make the highlight reel. So, 
Oh, we'll take that. That's a win. <laughs> we'll let a win. <laughs> As you said, you made your Anzac debut with Sonny uh, uh, in the Anzac test. Just how special is it to be announced as a Kiwi, receive your jersey? Like, tell us all about that experience, how you found out, and all that. Because that's amazing, eh? Very selective for your country. Yeah, it is. Uh, I was, I was definitely, I was proud. And uh, as a young kid, uh, watching New Zealand, uh, staying up late if they played in Australia, stay up late yeah. to to watch, watch the, the the battles against our uh, our rivalries. Uh, yeah, in in being a league. Love league growing up to be able to put on the black and, and white jersey. Uh, yeah, it was a moment for myself and my my family. Uh, well, the game's a different story. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a hiding, yeah, wasn't it? I thought she got a hiding, <laughs> got a hiding, but still a proud moment. Absolutely, a moment that I'll I'll never forget. Yeah, man, it's pretty amazing. Like you get those like goosebumps hearing your national anthem, doing the hucker. What's doing the hucker like? For New Zealand for the first time, like <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's yeah again proud uh, being able to do the the haka watching as a kid, and yeah, uh, yeah it was just this it was I, I think uh, <laughs> well that game the 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 haka was better than the game, <laughs> but uh, no, it's always proud to represent your country, and. Yeah. And, and definitely uh, those moments you'll cherish, cherish uh, forever. Absolutely, man. Um, man, I love watching the Haka. I love how they've changed it up over the last few years too. Like they went away from Kamati, Kamati, and they've really changed it. And it's just like, you're just like, all right, what are we in for this time? Like, it's, <laughs> And like seeing James Fisher Harris leading the Haka is just scary. <laughs> all that stuff, Yeah. Man. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, I love the way they 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 uh, do a hucker, and it, it has changed. It has evolved. You look back in the the nineteen fifties and seventies, and, and you yeah. see to where the, the, the evolution of the hucker to where it's at today. Passion, mana, it's it has everything. And uh, yeah, no, I love it. It, it brings goosebumps, oh, and it's, it's our history. It's our people, and. And uh, the All Blacks, the Kiwis, do a fantastic job of demonstrating the passion and mana of our country. Yeah, man. Yep. Like I'm Pakeha, but I love it. I'm, I'm a staunch Kiwi. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. Um, just keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after that, uh, you left the Panthers. Uh, so why did you leave the Panthers? And how did the West Tigers uh, contract come up? Because it's a shift across town. How did that all come about? Yeah, why I came up and, and John Lang was and Shane Richardson were, were honest with me. They told me we can't have you here the following season because uh, we don't have any enough money and, and we've got a we've got to renew our young talent contracts. At that time, Luke Lewis, Luke Rooney, uh, Craig Gower, Joel Clinton, uh, Benny Ross, they're all oh. playing representative football now. So they've gone from playing yeah. playing uh reserve grade to first grade all of a sudden. The winning grand finals and now they're playing state of origin so their contracts have to go up they want to keep their talent yeah. and i got there and and that there was just a honest uh honest corridor and I, I was understandable with that i didn't get down in the dumps i was still playing first grade and uh i hadn't been you know i've been in this position before but what i have now is i i have a premiership ring i've been able to yes. play consistent premiership football so uh and, and playing good football at the time too, so I was confident that there were other clubs out there. And there, there was when I yep. when I when I uh, negotiated my contract with the Panthers. I did that on my own accord with Shane Richardson, and uh, which was which was uh, a good contract and happy with it. But now that I had established myself, yeah, uh, I had to actually get an agent. And Colin Ward, who at that time was my my accountant, and in the twilight of his NRL career and was a bit of a mentor for me too. So look, Fats, you got to go and find yourself five managers, interview them yourself and and, and find out which one would be best fitting for you. So I, I did that. And uh, so I signed up with Sam Ayub. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, and he was able to do a great job in, in negotiating my next contract. And there were a couple of clubs, but the West Tigers were... Was the club that really 
intrigued me the most. Uh, they were on the rebuild. Yeah. Uh, really a new organization, as in the Tigers and the Magpies come together. Yes. Uh, it was actually uh, Scotty Settler uh, told Tim Sheens about me because he was at the club uh, the following year. And uh, Sheensy, <laughs> Sheensy gave me a call. And uh, I went to meet Sheensy at, at the Concord headquarters. Funnily enough, he must have timed it because the first grade team was still training and he, he he told me to come at the same time. So here I am having an interview with the coach, but his first grade team's training. So he probably did it for his players just to like, hey, you know, but a mind game's there. That's interesting. I down, yeah, I, I sat down with Tim Sheens and what I and what I was most impressed about it, he wasn't trying to um wasn't trying to piss in my pockets, telling me how good I was. He was telling me, "Hey, I, I think, uh, yeah, you're a great defensive player. You're, you're doing, you're, you're doing a great job here. But I think you can be more of an attacking weapon. And and how can I, I can do this to make you get more involved? We've got a young Benji Marshall coming up, a great oh, talent, yeah. going to be the next superstar. Fats, <clears throat> uh, I want you playing on the left center, which is my favorite, fa uh, fa favorite, favorite." Uh, side where I was playing on the right side at the Panthers at the time. Okay. And I'm more of an attacking weapon. Uh, yes. So that, that, that was why because I knew deep down I had more to offer and I knew okay. I, I knew I had more uh, more attacking capabilities. I just I just didn't need to showcase that at the Panthers because we had Reese, Reese, we had Preston Campbell, we had Ryan Gertler, Luke Lewis, Luke Rooney. Yeah. Uh, just, to be honest. So that was the, the 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 most intriguing reason why I moved uh, to the Tigers, and uh, you know it was a good contract too. Uh, the first six years of my career, uh, money wise, it, I was just making ends meet. It was just opportunities. And back in okay. the day, you're, you you had to prove yourself uh, before you you got paid uh, the good contracts. And and really, that six years I was. Just finally hitting my straps, going to the Warriors, going to Melbourne, playing feeder club, and and then the Panthers, and then finally establishing establishing myself in 03 and 04. Yeah. So yeah, it was exciting, and I, I went to the Tigers, and and things happened extremely quickly again. They certainly did. Um, well, because the Tigers, you said they were a pretty new organization. They came around what 1999. They merged uh, Western Balmain. And then, so you're, they're only six, they're into their sixth season, you're turning up. And, you know, they had a, such a great blend of young, like, talent, plus a few old heads, like you say, like like um, Todd Payton, Mark O'Neill, John Scandalis. And then, but when you look at the side, it's no wonder you signed with them. I wrote these down. It was Brett Hodgson, Pat Richards, yourself, Scott Prince, Benji Marshall, Robbie Farrer, Anthony LaFranchi, Todd Payton, as I said, Liam Fulton, Dean Hallettau, Bronson Harrison, just to name a few. <laughs> like, wow. Like, just stacked. And to be fair, Scott Prince had never really quite hit his stretch due to injuries for year on end. And it was like the stars aligned. And like, you, like yourself, Prince, Marshall, Hodgson, Robbie Barrett. Wow. Like, that back line just lit up. <laughs> it was yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, the, the stars did align. And, and what a great lineup. Uh, and uh, what what I do remember most, yeah, we trained hard, but we also enjoyed each other's company away from from training as well. And and uh, yeah, tight bonds. And Panthers were a tight bond too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, Scotty Prince, a lot of adversity, broke his leg yeah. uh, before and needed another opportunity. Come to the Tigers, and uh, he hadn't been proven yet as a a high class halfback who who could take take a team to the grand final and win it. So there were still question marks on, on Princey and I know exactly. Hojo says at the Pamela Deals, but unfortunately just come short as well as Paddy Richards. So yeah, it's just yeah. Start to put a line. We went through our hardships that year, but we found a way and uh we 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 you know Tim Sheen's he's it's not his first cup of tea. <laughs> he he exactly He's a great communicator, great technician. He knew how to get his players motivated. And uh, what a great coach. And I'm so proud. I'm so privileged to be able to be to be able to be coach underneath Sheenzy. He's probably my most favorite one. Uh, it's it, amazing. It is a, 
uh, as a as a person. And uh, yeah. Angie Marshall is so young, so confident. I know. Are they? He's, although he was a bit younger than me, I, I actually looked up to him because he was the pinup boy of the game that year and the following years to come. But just to have the confidence and and the, the mana to be able to to do what he did on the field and away from the field, he's 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 definitely left the legacy as well. As that legacy continues to go today, he's a freak. Like there's a try. Like this is totally off the top of my head that I just remembered. There's a game you guys played against Cronulla. It might have been 2006, but anyway, he steps through like off the left and then goes left again, and then another goosey to the left again, and then he's beaten about three guys, and then a no look pass out to Daniel Fitzhenry to score in the corner. Like no look bullet pass hits him on the chest. It's like a 50 meter play. Like it's unbelievable to watch head on. Like it's unbelievable. That step and pass is freakish. Like, did you guys know that that was even just gonna happen when once he got into first grade? Or the way he took the game off. Yeah, there were big talks about Benji uh, coming into the grade, and he made it like like Sunny Bill. Uh, they're they're a special, special, special breed. They don't come around too often, and straight out the gate, uh, Benji was a superstar. And he, like Sonny, struggled with some some serious injuries during their their career. He did, uh, but the, like all great players do, they find a way. And I, re I remember that day quite clearly because it was my birthday actually, and we celebrated that night. So it was a good night too, just <laughs> just loudly. And uh, yeah, Benji Benji definitely was a was a fantastic player. Uh, only. Only Benji can do what he can do, and his relationship with Tim Sheens and Tim Sheens uh, having the confidence in him just to be Benji and have Scotty Prinsky to be our general. Yes. Uh, it, worked, it worked perfectly. It was a great mix, and, and our halves were very tight, and uh, they definitely showcased, showcased it on the field. Oh, yes. Uh, in particular, in a match, I think it's um, there's a match you played against the Bulldogs. Uh, you, you smashed them 52 to two and you got a hat trick like do you remember that at all i do yeah let's be honest here the the bulldogs probably were going through well we went through it, the panthers but even worse they had a lot of injuries half their team were reserve grade uh, right they had to step up and and we were just on fire that night uh, the, yeah, the bulldogs were, were struggling so this let's not forget that uh, yeah, always nice to score a try. Let alone three tries and yeah, three in a game. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was. It was. Awesome. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, man. Good memories. Uh, but yeah, I, I, we, everything was just coming our way at that time. But what point of the season did you feel like shit? We're on a roll here. Like something special is brewing. Did you did you just kind of have a feeling that something incredible was going to happen? Like before you got to the finals. Similar to to my experience at Melbourne, uh, players start to be more, become more accountable on their own actions, but also their, their teammates and and Benny. We were in a bit of a struggle streak. I don't, I can't remember what what rounds they were, but we we actually had lost a few on the on the trot. And in the middle of the meeting, Benny Gillespie stood up, and, and uh, I won't share the exact words that he shared, but because uh, it was passionate. Yeah, he said, "Well, we're, we're, we're better than this. We 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 can be at the top four, and and at that time we were near the bottom. Uh, okay. So we is he challenged us as well as himself to 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 do better and, and be more accountable. So we come up with a, a a chart, and that chart was pretty much, well, what do you need to do to become a better player for the weekend ahead? So everyone started to do extras, even okay. on their day off, where there was wow. an extras board." So if you ran for 5Ks, you put on the board. If you ran for a 4K swim, you put that on the board. If you did extras with kicking the ball outside, you put that on the board. And then and then everyone started to, to put on a, those one percenters and uh, things just started to hap happen. We got in a bit of a roll. Uh, we may have run one seven or eight on the trot. It did, yes. Uh, the confidence grew. Like Penrith, uh, the team was stacked with young up-and-coming talents. With uh, a few old heads, yes, and a few in betweeners like myself, <laughs> and uh, everything just started to to come together, and we're having fun. We're still young, like and like I said yeah. before, we're, we're actually we're, we're really tight away from the field too. 
uh, and we still are today. I think that was the the telling factor for us to be a success that year too. We weren't just friends on the field, but also uh, our families hung out together and yeah, special group. Yeah, man. Um, again, you guys played an amazing brand of football. What I guess you had Benji Marshall, so it's pretty hard not to when he's running the ball. It's it's something special to watch. But I think finally uh, Scott Prince, he had that injury-free season and he really stood up. He was a leader. And, you know, there's actually a particular game that was actually when you went into the playoffs and you guys gave the Cowboys an absolute thrashing, like 50 to 6 or something. But I remember after each try you guys scored, even when you're up by 40, he's still, like, screaming at you guys to, like, make sure you get your next set right, you know, make sure. Like, he was just going off at you guys, even though you're winning and you're never going to lose. And I think that was the mark of, like, the true leader he was. Yeah, definitely a true leader, the ultimate competitor, barking all day. And that's what you need from your halfback to to bark and to, to, to call the shots. And because he had an a injury-free season, he was able to build up his confidence. Uh, him and Benji worked so well together. And yeah. uh, Scotty Prince was, was definitely our, our, our leader uh, within our team, not by actions. Yes, by actions, sorry, but also by words too and being that vocal halfback, what you need in every first grade team. Yeah, man, he was unbelievable. Like, uh, yeah, very much a stars aligning type of season. It was really cool. So, uh, yeah, you guys bowl into the playoffs. There's basically no expectations uh, from, like, say, the NRL fans' point of view. We just, it was just like one of those out of the box seasons. Oh, the Tigers were in the finals. How'd that happen? You know, <laughs> like, and, and then all of a sudden, you became a juggernaut. Like, you couldn't be stopped. You were a runaway train because, as I said, you smashed the Cowboys. So, first question. How did that feel to absolutely annihilate the Cowboys in your first playoff match with the Tigers? Yeah, well, we actually got a humbling experience the week before we played against the Panthers, who were bottom of the table. Okay. And they beat us. So it was actually, we, we won we won seven or eight games on the trot, and I believe we lost against, or we got, we got on a hot trot, then we lost to the Panthers in around 26 or 27. So that was actually, that was a good kick up the bum. So to actually say you're not as good as what you think you are, team. And Tim Sheets let us know you lost to the bottom of the table, team. Uh, so it was actually uh, good to lose then instead of the playoffs. So we went into that semifinals ready to prove to ourselves that we're ready for this game. That we deserve to be here. Not too many people uh, believe in what we can do, but we believe in ourselves and and, and the ball bounced our way that night. And uh, yeah, everyone played a good game. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was. Uh, it it uh, definitely showcased our school sets. And and Shinzi, we spent hours and hours on end outside on the on the practice pitch, practicing these moves that we've been doing. And and what you yeah. what you witnessed from Benji, that happened in training as well. So when it happens in in the game, that's just what he did in training. You know, crazy. And then you guys are ready to pounce if he has to pass the ball, you know, so you want to be there. Yeah. yeah. So that's so good. But I reckon it's fair to say you guys had one of the tougher draws going through the playoffs. You had to play the Broncos next, and then you had to play the Dragons on your way to the grand final. And these are two sides who've been up for quite a long time. And, like, you know, the Dragons, they had, like, Luke Bailey in the front row and, like, you know, class players and... But you guys smashed the the Broncos thirty four to six, and I think that's when all of a sudden, I remember watching it playing as day go, oh shit, the Tigers could go all the way here. Like, did you guys get that feeling after you demolished the Broncos? Like, we're definitely on a roll. Like, we've got something here. Yeah, we we knew we, we had something here, but we, we we had never been tested when we've been in the, the trenches or playing semi final football together. So when you when you're in those when you, when you're in in those top environments, you really can only take it one game at a time. And having a lot of respect for the Broncos, they were a great side. Uh, we we knew we were up against it, but we were ready for the challenge. And and that just comes down to preparing the best that we could do. We didn't have too many serious injuries. I know the Broncos may have been a bit broken down okay. at that time, too, but you just got to take your opportunities. And uh, because of the season that we had, we were confident. It was just question marks on us to to be able to race to rise to the challenge, uh, yeah. and we did it quite comfortably against the Broncos. Did 
do you think there's an element of like because he had youthful guys like Benji Marshall, Robbie Farah, uh, you know, in key positions in the side, and they've never played finals before, but they're just quality guys. Do you just think like almost that naivety of finals is like a good thing in that situation where they're just going out doing their thing because there's not as much pressure? Yeah, I yeah, I agree with you. And and also being local boys uh, and, and being able to represent your community and, uh, at that level, they probably have more care too because, you know, I, I only got to know West Tigers when I moved to West Tigers and as yeah. well as Cody Prince and, and other sightings outside of uh, the local district. So I think there is a, a element of of community and feel and being brought up in the district, playing rugby league. Liam Fulton as well, Bryce Gibbs oh, out in West Sydney as well. So you know they they bring uh, an important element to our team and and their key factor. I think uh, yeah, and also being young and, and not caring what others think too. I think it's pretty cool. They didn't care what yeah. other people thought. They believed in their talent and they were able to go out there and and showcase that talent on the biggest stage. I think it's special. Absolutely. And so uh, just from from watching it, it just looked like you guys were playing with this undeniable confidence. Like you felt like, I just felt like you guys were going to win every week through the finals. It was unbelievable to watch. So you came up against the Dragons, you won 20 to 12, uh, and you're going into your first ever grand final with the Tigers. It's the Tigers' first ever grand final. So it's your second. But unbelievably, the Cowboys upset the Parramatta um like freight train that was like gonna win the comp i thought they were gonna win the comp because they were on fire and they won 29 nil who knew and you'd flogged them a couple of weeks ago so <laughs> to rematch what's the feelings going into the the rematch because there's that always that mindset of oh we thrashed them last time but i assume you would never go in thinking that on the big day yeah, we, we actually, all, the entire team came around my house, my apartment in, in Sydney, and we watched the game together. We had a barbecue, and uh, we watched it together, actually. And yeah, uh, Parramatta Eels were unstoppable that year. And as you said, they were favourites to take it out. They were hard really? to beat. And I, from what I can remember, they beat us twice, too, during the regular okay. season. But yeah, just wasn't yeah they, they got shown up by the cowboys that day 29 nil did you say 29 nil you yeah, got a hiding it was you know when it, yeah they were a great side and had been for a number of years before before uh the 05 season and wow yeah we were uh watching it obviously happy because the cowboys won we had a number on them yeah <laughs> so uh we we yeah we definitely knew we were in with a grin uh, but we didn't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We knew the job wasn't done. No. And uh, like I said, we were a tight knit. And uh, they, they, again, been able to experience a grand final week. Yeah. Uh, was was uh, sensational. And uh, I, I wanted to, because the Panthers was a great experience and I still love my, I love my teammates at Penrith and, and we still remain friends now. Uh, it, it came to me really quickly. So I, I, I probably, I embraced it as it came, but having it the second time around and when I got to the Tigers, nobody is talking grand finals or semi-final football. There was a risk that, Hey, Hey Paulie, this may be your, you may not be able to plan another semi-final or grand final and, and to do it, so quickly, it was uh, an immense feeling of, of gratitude and, and wow, I've got this opportunity again. Yeah. And uh, it was huge, even more so now because uh, it was a big risk going to a club that were, were near the bottom of the table. And I'm, Absolutely. I'm happy that I, 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 I uh, took the risk and, and went to a club where we were able to achieve great success. Absolutely, man. And I think you're going into the grand final. I think uh, every Balmain Tigers of Western Suburbs Magpies jersey from the last 60 years that's been hidden in a closet, gathering dust has come out the cupboards, out the drawers. Everyone who's ever supported those clubs for the last 100 years is out there. Biggest crowd, 
crazy stuff. The Tigers and the Cowboys in the grand final. Absolutely nobody saw that one coming. No one at all. Um, so Matty Bowen scores the first try. You guys are down. What's the talk behind the post? Like, is it all quite calm still? Yeah, well, there, there was a statistic that year that if we scored twice, more than likely we we'll, we would win. <laughs> and uh, uh, Matty Bowen, great quality player, uh, scored Amazing. a try. I mean, we, uh, it, was, it happened early in the game. We, we we're still quite confident, obviously, and we, we we remained calm. We had a job to do. Everyone knew their role. Uh, we had a calling to to be focused every single minute. Uh, don't get too ahead of of the final in school. Just stay in the game and okay. and, uh, and 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 we did that. We stuck to the game plan and hit the pressure on the Cowboys. Yep. And uh, we, we capitalised on, on their mistake. You yeah, truly time. did. Because uh, putting pressure on them, uh, they threw a crazy offload in their own end goal, which Bryce Gibbs found he gets a couple every century. So he, he was really happy to score in a grand final. <laughs> I'm so uh, that, that sort of must have taken the pressure off a little bit. You know, yeah, it did. Things going. It did, because uh, time, 80-minute game happens really quickly in the grand final. And... And uh, you know, think about it. Uh, millions of people watching across the world. Uh, a multi-million-dollar company in in the Tigers, and obviously the NRL. The pressure, the fan, eighty thousand fans screaming. Ah, oh, you you got to really stay focused and remain in the moments and play each play. Which Tim Chings barked at us, not barked at us, kept on communicating to us throughout the whole week. Stay in the game, play by play, do your job. Uh, I think that was the telling factor, the reason why we'll be able to 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 uh, come on top. Yeah, man. At the end of the game. And then uh, one of the greatest grand final tries of all time. Got you guys ahead. We have to talk about the Benji Marshall flick pass. It's an unbelievable try. Like, w- like what did you see from your p- point of view? Um, oh, mate, Benji Marshall, he darts through a gap, breaks a tackle. He's about to go over the sideline. No look flick pass to Pat Richards. But it's a two-part try, really, because that's the first special part. But then old Paddy Richards is jogging downfield, and then he just gives the best palm off to Ron Jensen you've ever seen. Slams the ball down. One of the greatest grand final tries I've ever watched. It was so good. Like, very special. It was so good, and it was so special. It, it may not have happened. Pat Richards actually broke his ankle the week before. Amazing. He wow. actually... Shouldn't have been playing, but uh, he... That's crazy, I didn't know that. Himself. He, he was in the hyperbaric chamber for the entire week, didn't train once. Wow. Got about, he got a got a few needles in his ankle, painkillers before the game. We didn't know he was going to actually play the grand final until 30 minutes before the game when he went for a little trot to see how he had pulled up. And he no came, into, came into the, the changing rooms and we're all watching... He's just going, yeah, I'm in, boys. And we're just like, yes. yes. We're all happy and, and cheering because he was an important part of our team too. Devastating player. Great winger. Unreal. Unreal. And uh, Benji, <laughs> actually, the centre, as you know, Dave, I know you love your legs, the centre is supposed to run back on, on quick returns, run back to the corner to get there. I was yep. teaging. And so I didn't get back as quick as I should have. Uh, <laughs> Benji was back there, had the ball, worked his magic. Paddy really was on one leg. Uh, Benji worked his magic and uh, did the flip pass. Uh, the palm, what a great palm. So uh, good, wasn't it? Similar, similar to the Scotty Settler. Uh, try saving tackle. Oh, I'm, I'm another 40 metres back doing these ones. <laughs> <laughs> doing all big things. <laughs> they had the best uh, view and just uh, aesthetic when uh, they were able to pull it off. Great mm-hmm. try, one of the best. I just make I just want to make sure that the Pat Richards part never goes untalked about because everyone says the Benji Marshall flick pass, which amazing, amazing. But that Pat Richards part off, you could just tell Ron Jensen was never making that tackle. Eh? There was no chance. Just shoved yeah. him off. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, Rod, I was fortunate to play a year in uh, Huddersfield with uh, Ronnie Jensen, a great player. It doesn't get pummed off as at all. Uh, it just goes to show you the the skills and the awareness uh, that Pat Richard had had at that time. Nobody was going to stop him, even on one oh, leg. 
That was crazy. One of the best tries ever. And anyway, as history says, you guys went on, you pumped them in the end. Full Fighter Warriors won two grand finals. Unbelievable. Like, what about that for a journey? <laughs> Far out. Yeah, no, I, 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 you're very, very proud. I'm very, very, uh, it's, it does uh, make all, all the uh, hard work uh, and the dedication that you put into a sport and also your, the family support and community support uh, worthwhile and it came with a lot of tears, a lot of sacrifices. Yeah, yeah it just, everything just aligned and yeah, no, very, very proud of, of uh, planning two grand finals alongside my, my teammates who I still consider today my, my brothers. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a great game, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I love how you game. say that. <laughs> I just think it's a great sort of, uh, like, take it the right way, rags to riches story. Like, you know, you're from Wanui Amata, you, you, you've been around a few clubs, you got knocked back, then you go and win a grand final with a club who throws you a lifeline, then you choose to go to a club that's no way near finals contention and win in your first season another grand final with them. It's... It's unbelievable. It's actually an unbelievable story of determination, never willing to give up. And that's the greatest part of it. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, you, yeah I, was, I was a journeyman. <laughs> and uh, I'm just uh, looking back at it now as I reflect, I'm just so proud of myself that I didn't give up. And I continued to to believe in myself when I guess nobody else did. Uh, yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, Very no, good. good times, good times. Very good times. Well, not so good times. I actually heard from uh, CJ from the Life and Sport podcast you went on a way back. He told me to ask you about your grand final rings being stolen. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. And that you actually got them back. Tell yeah, well, I, I, I was, uh, it was my last game for the Panthers against the Bulldogs, the preliminary grand final, and because it was my last game, uh, with my brothers, uh, we had a good night out and, and enjoyed ourselves uh, so much that I, I walked up at my my home uh, when the sun's shining in the morning. So it was a big night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as I walked into my house, uh, yeah, my house had been burgled. That sucks. Yeah, which uh, the only things that were taken was my premiership ring and a dvd player if any of you know what a dvd player is you probably don't <laughs> really worth about 50 bucks now <laughs> I know. Uh, so yeah no my, my house yeah the, the ring was stolen uh, but uh the nrl the nrl were were so awesome they heard about uh my uh, what happened and they they actually uh, recreated me a, a new uh, premiership ring uh, beautiful pretty cool and uh, cool. that, that ring, I no longer have it though. I gave it to my father. Okay. So he's he's he wears it most days in in one year or Mata, walking around the local community, telling everybody that he won it. But that's that's all good. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Proud dad, love it. <laughs> yeah. So I hear you, your ring got returned. Eventually, they found Listen, it. Yeah. Well, that's another story. Yes, it was returned at the time I was living in England. And uh, Alan Mayer, who was the trainer at the Tigers, but also at that time when I was in England at the Panthers, called me up and said, hey, the police have found it. Uh, I've got your ring. I said, yeah, hold on to it. So I was I was doing my Super League uh, uh -huh. time in Huddersfield. Uh, I came back two years later. He actually gave it to Benji. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, know whether, I don't know what Benji's done with it. It's the, the originals. Polly in his bloody garage, so in a box, hiding out. So I haven't yet received the, the original uh, premiership ring, but uh, the replicant of it, my, my dad wears it proudly in, in one year matter. Oh, wow. Come on, Benji. Send it home. Send it yeah, home. Come on, Give back, it to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. I actually met Benji uh, as he came down uh, for the trial match against the Warriors this year at Christchurch. Got my photo with him. Happy days. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. I saw that, actually. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, it's good man smile next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a busy man. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, I think the great thing about the game, too, it's you, even though when you're retired, it's still, if you're good enough, you can 
you can find other opportunities in in the game. And that West Tigers team, the majority of the players that they play in the grand final are either working uh, within the NRL. Yeah, you got Mark O'Neill, who's now the Parramatta Eels football manager. You got uh, Bronson Harrison working in, in the bunker. Benji obviously coaching. Uh, Bloody uh, Payton coaching. Yep. Uh, Cowboys. Uh, Shane, Shane Alford is the head trainer at the the Panthers. Yeah. The of that team. Uh, you got uh, Lafranke. He's the football manager up in the Titans. Wow. Still within the game at, at uh, you know at high levels, which is which is uh, special. It's cool. Yeah, the great special team, eh? Yeah, very really special side. I mean, we do have regular uh, catch ups because I live in New Zealand. It's hard for me to get to Australia, but they do they do a good job of uh, staying connected. That's good, man. That's good. Always relive those memories. It's so cool. So you kicked off the year um, in one of the finest moments in New Zealand rugby league history. There's not many of these come around. 24-0 uh, tri-series victory over the Kangaroos. Uh, Paul Fatuera scores a try. Uh, mate, how good was that to get one up over the Kangaroos? Like, What's that match like for you? You never had been done uh, in a long time, 50-odd years. Crazy. Uh, or how long it was, and and uh, yeah, Bluey, Bluey, great coach, uh, got the got the buy-in from our leaders of the team: Ruben Wiki, Nigel Vagana, uh, Paul Rohihi. Uh, yeah, they 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 were able to to lead us young puppies around too, and uh, we had a great tour. We 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 looked out for each other. You know, going away for six six to seven weeks is is a long time. Yeah, and, uh, we definitely did bond, but to beat Australia a couple of times on that tour, uh, yeah, actually, in the grand final, the way we yeah. did, yeah, it was it was it was our time. It was a long time coming. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, Monty with uh, Shantine Harpy, Clinton Torpy, we had a great team. Jake Webster, yeah, and I know uh, St uh, Stacey Jones, another leader, the general. He was flying yep. back and forth from New Zealand to the UK two or three times because his his wife was uh, pregnant at the time too. So That's right, yeah, he only got. Did into... Brent Webb at fullback? Brent Webb at fullback. He was a gun, mate. I love Brent Webb. Such a good player. Yeah, great, great player. player. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, amazing. What a win! A... Yeah, to be honest, for nil was uh, was overwhelming and. And definitely enjoyed enjoyed the after party as well. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. Is that, would you say, looking back at your career, that that has to be the pinnacle year? I mean, I know you won the comp with the Panthers, but to win a grand final and a tri series over the the Kangaroos twenty four nil. I mean, it's pretty hard to top that. It has to be hard to top. Yeah, on on a personal level, there there was there was a a special year, and to be able to achieve. Uh, uh, the Tri Nations in the grand final the same year was 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 uh was special. Uh, yeah. I wish I could have continued uh, those moments, but uh, I think from 06 onwards it started to go a little bit differently. <laughs> but you know you got to take the good with the bad. Uh, it can't, be all, can't be all uh, roses. <laughs> yep. So you end up moving over to the UK. So what was the deal with that uh, leaving the Tigers? And you signed with was it Huddersfield? Yeah, I, I can I can be honest with you. It's was, it was more so uh, my my pension. <laughs> Why not? You heard <laughs> no, I said in the, in the way I could, I could what what I mean was my body was breaking down. I played like a hundred games in a row, and I could tell yeah. that my body was was breaking down. I was pulling my hammies and calves more. It was taking me longer to recover. So when I when I got to I had a year, two more years of the Tigers and uh, injuries and and again trying to back up a premiership. Uh, everyone's out to get you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me it wasn't a I was yeah it had too much my body was just breaking down. And I had to think, okay, this is 2000, 2007 here. I, I've, I'm not in the game for a long time. I, I do have to think business and and financial security. Uh, I may only have three or four or five years. Uh, and I and and also I felt like at that time I, I had a, I had achieved a, enough 
success in the game to be able to make the decision to move to the UK to experience a new country. Yeah. Uh, and and obviously for the financial rewards, uh, but also my body, most importantly, my body was breaking down and, and the Super League, although it is a great competition, uh, at that time it was wasn't up to the NRL standards whatsoever and okay uh, I needed to prolong my career okay so that's 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 the way to go off to the UK make some pounds and turn them into Kiwi dollars and come home <laughs> exactly so what was it like over there man was it cold like being a Kiwi boy yeah it was pretty cold over there it was but I, I had experience going on tour tour three tours with the Kiwi so I knew what to expect okay. right I know what to expect, and uh, uh, although uh, uh, yeah, it is a little bit hard to train in the snow and and to get up for those moments, I uh, I did that, and and I, I still wanted to give it my best. I still had goals to achieve, and and be a success at Huddersfield, and and as the number one signing for that year, I, I did want to to make an impact. Uh, the, the first yeah. year and uh, yeah I think they did things differently over there um, but okay. you know, they're, that's what the experience is all about is experiencing new new ways of or playing the game and new ways of living yeah did you find much success with Huddersfield while you were there first year we did we on a, on a, on a personal level I was able to uh, receive the, the player of the year award for the club Oh, nice. As a team, we we weren't able to achieve uh, too much success. We didn't. I don't. I can't remember if we made the semi-finals. No, I don't think we did. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, not so much as a team, but I, I think uh, uh, off the field, I was going through my own personal uh, battles, and. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's when you're away from home, a different country, 24 hours away, you probably don't have the same support systems that you would have had when I was back in Australia or, or New Zealand. And and then, uh, yeah, I went through some personal battles during that time. Okay. Uh, you have no regrets. Fair enough, too. So uh, after three years over there, you decided to come back to the NRL and you signed with Parramatta, which is a little... You know, out of the box as well, um, and you played one game for them. Uh, what was the thoughts behind coming back and moving on to Parramatta? How did how did you sign with them? Yeah, well, I finished off at Huddersfield, uh, not because of injury. I had uh, I was battling personal mental health uh, issues, so I actually retired, uh, Dave, yeah. and I moved back from home. But I just have to mention uh, Nathan Brown was our coach at that time, and and what a great uh, support he was for me during those dark days of my career and, and finishing my career. And Huddersfield and 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 Nathan Brown supported me through that time. I, we moved back to Australia at that time. I, I had a young family. I had a young daughter who had just been born, and my my partner at the time and my my ex wife now uh, Vanessa. We moved back to Australia uh, to to be close to the family and and to experience life after football. But most importantly, regain my mental health. Yes, and, and we're on the I was going through those battles at the same time. So I had a year off completely. Okay. And Stephen Kearney gave me a call. And right. said, hey, would you like to come back out of retirement? Uh, he was coaching Parramatta at that time. That's so, right. yeah. So to be honest with you, I I, I had retired with, with no education, uh, no, no uh, life after footy experience. I wasn't okay. planning on retired. The went how how and and the reason why I did, uh, so the reason the main reason why I went back to Parramatta, or oh, sorry, the reason why I signed up with Parramatta because I had no no qualifications, or I had no nothing to fall back on. I was that football player that was a stall in rugby league, yeah, and which is not a good thing. I don't recommend any athlete to do that. And, okay. And so the reason why I went back to Parramatta it was it was for the contract, which wasn't a good contract. It was. I paid the bills. <laughs> yep. Uh, Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. Because uh, I wasn't, I wasn't mentally, I was still sick mentally. Okay. And I just had no way to provide for my family, and that's the reason why I went in. And I, I tried. I uh, the, the that year was a blue. I only had one first grade game, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, the reason why I caught it um, quits because I because I was looking at the clock every five minutes, waiting for the okay. to finish. And I thought to myself, man, I don't des- I don't deserve to be here. This, um, I'm letting my club down, I'm letting my family down. I'm I'm mentally not here no more. So it was actually a blessing in disguise for me personally because it just said, hey, you tried to come back. Your heart's not in it. You got to get yourself well uh, mentally. And I played one game, and I, I caught it. Caught it quits after that. I think it takes a big person to do that because some people could easily just take the paycheck and play week after week, not give your all, and you know it doesn't help the team. Um, so it's and actually it's- amazing you did that. You know, especially when you said you're, you're going through your own personal battles, you've got no qualifications to fall back on or trade your skills or whatever. You know, that, that that's not an easy decision to make. You know. Yeah, yeah, well, my heart was in it. And I want to just say this again. It wasn't a big contract. It was a, it was an extremely small contract, but it was it was something. Yeah. Uh, better than what well, I had no qualification, so it would have been, you know. So, uh, yeah, I had to I had to do a bit more healing away from the game, and step okay. out, of, out of the game for a number of years, uh, before I could step back in and and I thank Parramatta for giving me the opportunity. I know Muxi had the utmost uh, respect for me during that time too and, and gave me an opportunity, but uh, I just wasn't ready. Yeah. My time had been done in the first grade. Okay. Well, thanks for opening up and telling us that, man. That's, that's nice of you to share. Like, you know, these are the, the battles that people go through we don't hear about because we just don't know. Yeah, so uh, thanks for opening up, man. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, sweet as so um i've got a few fan questions to finish off with um kane anderson wants to know which team had the better grand final celebration the panthers or the tigers <laughs> great question uh, they both had had long nights and and a long week i know some of my teammates went on for a number of different weeks uh, wow. but i can't say which one was better they were both special uh, i think uh, just i know with the tigers uh, I was more. It happened so quickly at the Panthers, and didn't think I'd get that opportunity again. So I probably appreciated it even more so at the Tigers because it came around pretty quickly when nobody else expected it, even myself expected it yeah. to happen uh, once again. Very good, very good answer. Uh, Troy Warner from the Paracave Podcast. He wants to know: Did you have any regrets at all signing with the Parramatta Eels after the year you had there? I, I I have no regrets on on signing with uh, Parramatta. Looking back at it now, should I have signed? No, I was mentally going through my own battles. But uh, in a way, when you're going through, I don't want to. It's, it's not a mental health issue here, but I think when I was going through those times, it actually gave me one thing to hold on to, and to okay. strive for. It gave me one positive focus. So going to Parramatta was a focus to get myself well get back and playing the game that you love. So in a, in a way, at that time, it probably gave me some gave me a glimpse of hope and a, and a goal to try and achieve. And although I came up short, at least it gave me something in my life at that time to to focus on and to go towards. That's a great answer. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Love it. Good, man. So I want to know, what club do you support? Because you've been in a few. You've played for a few. What club do you support? <laughs> Well, being a junior man like myself, Dave, and and going through blood and sweat and tears for five different clubs, and my 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 partner in crime, my my better half Trina, she always barks at me at this. You can't do that. You got to pick one team, but I pick whatever team is winning. That is my team. So if Melbourne Storm are going well, they're going to a grand final. I'm jumping on that waka. If the Warriors are doing well this year, I'm jumping on that waka. Uh, the Panthers, the Tigers. Uh, to be honest, I'm just a big fan of the game, like you, Dave. Uh, I'm getting love- more and more into every club. Like I've been Warriors forever, but then because disclaimer, I'm half Australian because my dad's from Brisbane. So when the Dolphins started, I had to get. A, I just loved the whole vibe of the Dolphins being such an underdog. If I'd rubbish their signings, if I thought they'd be the worst side of the world, so I'm like. I'm supporting the Dolphins. I have to now because I love the underdog. So I bought me a jersey and I'm like, well, I'll represent my dad's side of the family. We'll go for a Brisbane team. Got my mum's a Kiwi. So 
Yeah, so I got my Warriors and my Dolphins, and that's me. But I just love, I just love watching the game. It's just every game's good this year. I can't believe how great the league's been in comparison to say last year or years prior. It's been great. I agree with you, Dave. Uh, in the Las Vegas to start the year off, yeah, on such a high note, and it just goes to show the quality, the caliber of of the athletes and the mindset that they they have uh, in in today's game of uh, rugby league and. It's it's a it's a wonderful game, and I've seen it plenty. I've seen it plenty of times uh, today, but it's so entertaining, and it's, yeah, uh, you know. And then back to the five clubs. Like I have a special moment, special times with each and every one of the clubs that I was able to represent, and always left on good terms uh, with all the clubs that I was able to represent. Uh, and uh, I do have a soft spot for for all of them, and obviously my my if it was my favourite, so it had to be the Panthers and the Tigers. Yep. So that's where I achieved uh, the most uh, success, uh, but I I still have a a, a a a warm and open heart for the Warriors, and I want them to do well. That was my first ever club that had faith in me to and yep. gave me a start in my NRL uh, career, and it's so great uh, to see that they have been hugely successful uh, the last couple of years, and 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 hopefully that will remain, and and they can do do better. Each and every year because it's so tight, so tough. The Warriors yeah. have the support, they have the belief, and most importantly, what I love to see is they have the belief in themselves. They've got a great coach, obviously. Yeah, and uh, they're in it to win it. Yeah, man, they're going great. It's just especially after those COVID years, they were away from home, bottom of the ladder, and now they're flying. People love them. Yeah, it's going great. You gotta, yeah, it's, it's, you got to have a bit of adversity too, and. Uh, not nice times for for anybody, let alone the the Warriors. The players been away from their family, but uh, in a way, I, they had to go through those challenging times to to be with there now too. And and no other club has gone through what they've gone through, so they can use it as, as a strength yeah. even and, and push on hopefully. And man, it's, a, it's such a great game, and uh, yeah, so I want to do well. So if they make the grand yep. final this year, I'm going to jump on the Warriors Waka this year, Dave. That's this right. Get in the Waka. <laughs> so uh, who do you actually think will win the NRL this year? Do you think Penrith can go four in a row? Oh, uh, it would be a tough ask, but if there's any team they can do it, they could possibly do it. But it's tough. Uh, That'd be cool. Yeah, big call. When's Nathan Cleary back? Uh, not this weekend, but next week. Okay, it's a tough ask. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, although I would love them to make it as well, but yeah, I don't think they're gonna make it. I'm gonna have to go with. Man, I don't know. Melbourne's going good. Uh, it's too early to speak. <laughs> too early. Too early days. Know. All right. Okay, we'll let you off the hook. <laughs> okay, so what's your favourite TV show of all time? Uh, had to be The Last Dance. The Michael Jordan. Um, yeah, Michael, that's great. Uh, during COVID, uh, it got me through. Uh, yeah, I still man. put it on now and again today as well. I'm a big Michael Jordan fan. I grew up uh, watching Michael Jordan. I was clicked at all his basketball cards, read all his books. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You yeah, get it training there. them at school, yeah, primary school. Those were the days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I'll swap your two Scotty Pippins for a Michael Jordan, please. <laughs> what a legend. What a legend. Great show. Good answer. Love it. Okay, last question. If you were on death row, what would your final meal be? I have to be mum's roast chicken. I love my mum's roast chicken with stuffing and roast potatoes and kumara. Uh, she she beautiful. she cooks uh, beautiful roast chicken. So mum's roast chicken, mum's roast chicken. We've got a lot of mums cooking on the show. <laughs> Everyone loves their mum. Oh man, thank you, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been such a pleasure to to speak with you, meet you, and hear about your career. Unbelievable achievements, two grand finals and a Tri Nations uh, victory over Australia. One of the great wins. So thank you so much for your time, man. It's been amazing. Welcome, David, and I appreciate your time too. Had a great chat. Didn't realize time went so quickly. We've been here only for a couple of hours. So you're a good Crazy, man, eh? Dave, and, and you keep up the great work. And yeah, and I love what you do. Passionate people like you, like you, and the game is, is so important, so crucial f to continue the growth of our, of our great game of rugby league. So thank you, David. Uh, you're welcome, man. We've got to 
keep the stories alive too from our legends, which is, you know, inspiration for our next generation. That's that's kind of my whole, you know, mantra for this. So, um, yeah, hopefully it inspires a kid somewhere to play rugby league because of you guys. Yeah, that's the whole idea. So uh, thank you to everyone for watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify. Make sure you follow the platforms. Come join the Facebook group. Paul Fatuera is on there. It's amazing. There's heaps of legends on there. And so point a different rugby league. Get on there. And we'll see you guys next time for kickoff. Full time. <laughs>